Good morning everyone, my name is Norman, it's good to see you again. Soon it will be Halloween and well, I was working on a mask. Why I was working on that mask, I thought, yeah boy, why don't you start filming and I downloaded this mask from Thingiverse, it's a, well, it's a Sith mask from uh, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. It was printed in six pieces. You can see one, two, three, four, five, six. And I used hot glue to glue everything together. Yeah, it looks kind of shitty now, but it's okay. I'm going to use this mask as a base for an idea. Okay, the idea is to add some infinity mirrors onto the mask so that, well, if you look into the mask from the front, it will look like there are some, some holes inside the mask which go inside the head of the wearer. So first thing I did was actually just cutting out cardboard pieces to, you know, get the shape of these infinity mirrors. Uh, I'm going to add many little small ones because the mask is not flat. It's gonna be round. One big flat infinity mirror, which I wanted to do before, would look kind of weird because also people have noses. It would just be something flat like this and now that just doesn't work. I had the idea to split it up into many little pieces and then I, you know, cut out cardboard and well, I try to arrange them somewhere so that, you know, you can still see something with the eyes and uh, so next thing I did was actually um, just designing them in vector. I used Affinity Designer for that because I don't want to pay for Adobe, whatever. And then, um, you know, I printed three parts already for these infinity mirrors. Well, good thing is I still had transparent filament lying around which is going to make the effect a little bit cooler and a little bit easier for me. Okay, so the next step is, well, you can maybe already see it here on the nose a little bit. I made some small cutouts already to, well, to fit these pieces here on so that it doesn't stand off very much. Therefore, I need to grind down a little bit. Um, it hurts a little bit because that's actually a pretty cool mask, but um, it's gonna be hopefully a lot better soon. I use that Dremel here, you know, just Dremel it down. You know, the big one is going to be here and then a smaller one is somewhere, somewhere here, I guess. And the other one is supposed to go around the eye and maybe also covering it a little bit so that, you know, it's, it's like a, a more three-dimensional effect. Enough talking, let's get to work and hopefully you guys will enjoy. Well, good thing is actually that it doesn't really need to be very accurate because, well, I'm going to cover up most of it anyway later. Yeah, it's just it's just like very, very rough work and um, just needs to fit. And well, it does, which is great. And well, I'm just going to do the exact same process for the other two little mirrors. And we are going to fast forward this because I love listening to music while working and you can't listen to music when I'm recording, you know. So, single clap, and then back to business. Okay guys, this is how it's going to look like, more or less like we're gonna have three mirrors here. One on the forehead, and you can see the rest probably also. So, um, I don't know exactly how it's going to look like when they're actually mirroring stuff, but this is just like the first step of everything. So, um, I think things gonna be good, right? Well, and the next step is, Guess what? Um, I'm going to use these things also as a template, um, just you know, to cut out the one side of the mirror. I don't, I still don't know exactly how I'm going to cut these out without the proper tools. The problem is when working with a mirror is, well, number one, you can see angles which you're not supposed to see, probably. Number two, you know, I can actually, I can only make straight cuts. Yeah, usually uh, with these, with this thickness, I think it's about, um, let me guess, it's just like four or five millimeters. So it's a very, very kind of thick um, material. I used to cut these things with my knife, actually. It's not a very, very sharp knife, but it's a good knife. The second I find it. Okay, so what you do is basically you take whatever you have and I usually also take a ruler, but because, you know, these things are kind of like a ruler. Um, so I just put this here and then just scratch the material and then you'll probably use a ruler because, you know, I can't really apply pressure with it. Yeah. Okay, and then, well, that's kind of stupid now because I don't have a cameraman, so um, I just need to place that camera somewhere where you can see my face, but also the stuff I'm doing. Um, 
I should get a cameraman. Oh, woman. No judging. Just put it here and then you scratch the material as far as you can. And then you're having like a deep, deep scratch inside the material and this is the point where you can usually break it. And because this scratch you just made is the weakest spot of the material, it usually breaks at this scratch you made. But the problem is this: these things are not kind, <laughs> they're not square. And probably I need to just cut along a small strip first and then we're just going to go on from there. So actually the first scratch you do it without a lot of pressure because um, when you apply pressure immediately it's easy to just slip off the ruler, you know, you're not going to have a straight cut or scratch. So first you, you take it easy, low pressure and then you increase the pressure with every cut and that should usually do the job. And scratching the material far enough to make it break at the point where you want it to break. I'm very sorry, you can't even see what I'm doing, right? Just give me a second. So now you can see I made the scratch here. Now I need to bend everything evenly because, well, that's that's a very, very long distance to, to break and bend. I'm actually also going to use this ruler here um, to bend the material and hopefully it's going to break exactly along the scratch I just made. Just going to make it this way. And don't worry guys, this is going to be very, very loud. Not for you, because I'm going to do some audio limiting, but in case you're doing this in real life, someday. Uh, I don't want to scratch, ah, doesn't matter actually. As I told you, a lot of pressure, I'm just going to use it without the ruler. I'm, I just want to get it done, seriously. Oh. Well, I should have used the ruler, because as you can see, it didn't split, it didn't split very straight. But it's just fine. This, this piece will hopefully be enough for all of the parts. Yeah, it should, should work somehow, I guess. So now when this thing is a little bit smaller, it's a lot, a lot easier to work with. Music on, Norman gets to work. One small clap down here. Guys, if you can, use that braking technique. But, you know, there are sometimes shapes which you can achieve with the braking technique. That's why I decided midway to use that Dremel. And as you can see, it can get kind of kind of messy. I need to clean myself. Okay guys, I cleaned myself. I actually also started vacuuming my room because, well, that stuff was everywhere. And then I noticed I gotta do the same stuff again. Because, well, an infinity mirror consists of two parts, two mirrors. One is actually just a regular mirror like this one. And the other one is like, um... Yeah, is it a double-sided mirror? I don't know. So this actually means I still need to do the other cutouts. I'm going to do the messy job and then I, I'm hopefully, hopefully I'm done with messing around in my room, at my desk, at my computer and all that stuff. I need more space. Long story short, I need to go to the hardware store and get some of these transparent plexiglass because reasons. I don't have it lying around here. Yeah. <laughs> As you have seen, um, well, these LEDs actually work. Uh, it's fairly easy to program. Well, you need a resistor and a capacitor. I had these lying around, so uh, that's great. 
Right now, I'm printing um, small little parts for each LED. Each, each of these parts are going to hold one LED. Unfortunately, I can't have them so dense as here on this strip. I need to spread them a little bit because I need to reduce the amount of, um, well, of LEDs um, because it's gonna draw so much power. I don't want to worry about battery, that's why I'm going to reduce the LEDs. I'm not gonna shine that bright anymore, but it's still bright enough, I think. And with these holders, I can easily place the LEDs and solder them all together and hopefully it will work. So um, today is Saturday and I need to have a shower and then you know do Saturday stuff. Yep. Okay guys I gotta admit um, I continued working without recording because I totally forgot that I am doing YouTube stuff. This is how far I got, so it's not that far. These are the little parts which I printed. They're more or less like little sockets for the LEDs. And what I did was cutting the entire strip into single pieces and later it's going to look like this. Uh, I actually already finished the first mirror thing. So the contacts are bent to the outside so that like, they're connected. And then I just soldered everything together uh, so that it, well, it gets something like a circuit. So, and this is actually already how it looks with, well, with the glowing lighting pattern. And that's the reason why I'm actually also doing all this, everything with the LEDs. So that, you know, you can have different glowing patterns and make it a little bit more fancy because infinity mirrors inside the mask are not fancy enough. Good job Norman. Well, I just recorded like my end speech and I totally forgot to turn on the microphone. So <laughs> I got to do everything again. So that mask is finally done. Basically, it was a very, very messy job because you know, hot glue is always getting a little bit messy. Maybe until next year I have learned how to do 3D sculpting and then I can do everything on the computer which will make everything a lot easier, a lot faster and also a lot cleaner. But I think for the given time, also considering that, well, my Arduino died and I had to order new ones, which should have arrived on Saturday, but they didn't. And that kind of messed up my schedule, <laughs> whatever. For the given time, um, I think I can be pretty happy about the result. And that being said, I think this video is already way too long. So see you guys in the next video. I hope you enjoyed. Um, yeah, usually YouTubers say like and subscribe, but I seriously don't care. If you enjoyed it, do it, whatever you want. So um, enjoy your Halloween at least, and see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.